Good morning. I'm Bob Hennig. I'm the owner of Bob's BMW Motorcycles. I am here in my office. We've used it as a little bit of a studio, and I'm with uh, the legendary designer for both BMW and many other com companies, Hans Moot. And it is my honor to call him a friend as well. But he is here to discuss the evolution of the R80 GS, closest to the motorcycle in front of me, and how it turned into the finished product of the R80 GS that we see behind us, which is a 1981 example. The uh, development of the GS80, I call it the GS80, not the official BDR GS80, had been a very special one because uh, it developed uh, with, for an idea within 20 minutes. I had been asked where to do something in the motorcycle development because the motorcycle development had been outsourced in 1975 and get back in 1978. So everybody wondered and of course uh, the uh, highly motivated uh, uh, development crew including design had been a kind of stunned what's going on here. And a program planner uh, approached me and said Mr. Mood we have to do something to do because all the motivation and the work flow is uh, a little bit lame, so I said, uh, well, what could we do? To this time I was running a Range Rover car from England. I was highly satisfied about the luxury on one side and on the functional abilities you can do with this car. So I said, how about uh, we are building a Range Rover motorcycle? <laughs> And Mr. Müller said, well, that sounds interesting, how you like to do it? And I said, general idea is uh, make a kind of enduro, uh, because we are running uh, right now into a very rough sea. So I think that would be uh, the, uh, the thing to do. And, uh, well, I said, we uh, basis should be an R65. We can keep the tank, which is the most important uh, and uh, to do in investment. Uh, lots of money. We can change the seat bank. In general, we need a front fork to enduro type, which maybe the uh, engineer, the test department can help us. And the other thing, we are just doing new to get a new approach because this kind of motorcycle BMW didn't have to that time. Well, he agreed and said, how shall we proceed? And I said, well, one thing first, in a very speedy way. I sit down, made some sketches and um, mainly a concept. The concept saw that the motorcycle has a character of muscle and tendons. Very light, very lean, very mean and uh, when you distract the motorcycle from all the fashion level or more emotional stuff how we did uh, with the R90S and the more functional uh, demands uh, like the R100RS I said uh, it get very the engine the boxer engine which is the heart and I called it the red bleeding heart of a BMW boxer product I said, this will be in the focus. It started with 1917, and we had been in 1978. I said, how about I will paint that totally entire black, and it will be uh, escorted by, for instance, uh, the rubber boots, I, I called it uh, the baby pants always. Uh, put this in red and put some accent in the seat, and even in the rear uh, drivetrain and coil. And I said, good. That is something very much visible, very much different. And well, after the sketches, I called my uh, modelers crew and uh, said, we are going directly into three, 3D. 
and we cut it uh, down in uh, hard foam instead of clay because the tank already was there and we used the front fender and uh, we used uh, the rear fender from the parts uh, BMW had. Okay, it was finished quickly, quickly. It was finished very quickly. It sounds like it evolved much faster than a normal prototype process that could take a whole nother yeah, year. Yeah, that was a secret. It was an instant idea and there was a need for instant action and for not, you know, a kind of very, very normally longer time of uh, uh, preparations and uh, uh, getting set up a kind of project book for it, you know, it was just like that. Now, in 1979, I left BMW and the project was forwarded to uh, uh, the um, engineering and later planning, production planning. And when I saw it in 1980 approach the market and the public, it looked that way. What happened? In general, my uh, explanation is that uh, they didn't follow my concept and to that time BMW got very much engaged in uh, racing and the racing color in Ger of Germany is in general silver or white. Now white had been used by the cars and the typical BM3 BMW colors which is the blue for Bavaria, the red had been uh, given because they had an agreement with Texaco and when you're mixing it you receive a kind of that color. Right? So full blending of the colors yeah. represent the race. What department. is left is there is still a very powerful beating heart of a BMW boxer engine but you can't see it uh, represented outside in a red color but I tell you it's still beating up to today. And uh, every other things have been taken over except uh, the side cover, which have been different. And there is a particular little interesting item. Uh, my favorite little feature here, design-wise, yeah. <laughs> is that the choke lever has moved from the side on the motorcycle where it was on earlier models to back here during the prototype. And then by 1981 production, the choke lever is on the handlebar, yeah. but before that it was not. So this is very correct for the period pieces available. Um, but this is one of my favorite little styling exercises, that this is right here out of the way, um, not up on the handlebar. Um, yeah. I want to have one motorcycle from my own collection like this. For me, a motorcycle and a motorcyclist is a kind of can tower. The uh, Greek mythology says it's a horse with an upside uh, man's body and head. And for me, that's a motorcycle because the motorcyclists are physically integrating into the bike. And when you are prepared to use it, I like the flow. You are encounter the motorcycle and you prepared for the ride and you sit on it, you put your helmet on, your glove, you start the engine and your arm falls down and here's the choke. Now, I don't like to settle dazzle nervously, but because you like to concentrate for the ride and uh, uh, for the safety and of course for the fun of ride. This is a wonderful explanation Hans. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. I am delighted that you had the opportunity to be here for not only an event but to share this so that our customers around the world can see this. And I'm especially thankful to Mr. Martin who could not be with us because I know that he had also hundreds and hundreds of hours like you in making this uh, recreation of the original prototype come to be. And we are essentially thankful to both of you.